Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be going over some buffs that are going to be coming in for a couple of characters. These were decided by the community because a vote was put out on the Discord back in November on which characters the community would like to see buffed most out of a select list of characters and the top two characters that were voted on by the community were Gold Mythic Christmas Carol and Gold Mythic OG Strong Beta. Now there were some other characters there that didn't actually make the cut. We didn't know exactly how this was going to work, how many characters could get buffed. But it seems that Scopely took the top two voted characters from that list and gave them a little boost. Now the first character we're going to look at is going to be Christmas Carol. I thought I'd use a nice Christmassy looking background with all the snow. First up, we're going to look at her Adrenaline Rush. The original Adrenaline Rush she had was called That's the Spirit. It was a 66 AP cost rush. Deal 400% damage to a line of enemies. Those enemies get minus 20% defense for two turns. The new Adrenaline Rush on her upgrade is now deal 600% damage to a line of enemies. Those enemies get minus 35% defense for two turns. The same AP cost on the rush but a massive boost in the actual damage output and the defense down that she's going to be putting on those characters as well. Carol is mainly a support character, but this is obviously going to improve her damage output, but also the support output when the defense down comes in as well. I don't necessarily see her taking out two characters all the time with this rush, but follow-ups from actual damage dealers afterwards is almost a guarantee. Then we have her signature move, which was called Head Cracking Carol. It has a turn one initial cooldown, cooldown of one turn, number of uses unlimited. Make a critical attack against an enemy for 150% damage. One other teammate recovers from bleed and one other teammate recovers from burn. This has been changed to make a critical attack against an enemy for 350% damage. Three other teammates recover from bleed and burn. So obviously it's a massive boost to the actual damage an extra 200 percent on top of the original damage output but also the cleanse on the bleed and burn has been increased as well before it could be separate people who got cleansed so one person would get cleansed of bleed and another person could get cleansed of burn now it's just going to be three people are going to be cleansed of both obviously this is quite an improvement i feel and lastly, she has had some mythic ability upgrades. These are going to be her passives. Now going to the passives that are specific to Carol. More for us, less for you. When attacking, 100% chance to heal another teammate by 30% of their max HP. That has been changed to when attacking, 100% chance to heal one other teammate by 60% of their max HP. So a massive heal to combat things like infection, so on and so forth. It's going to be very nice for, you know, your damage dealers on attack. If they have got infection, big heal coming in. And there's some pretty big infections out there. 50%, 100%. This is going to help greatly. Then when we move on to the rest of her passives, you can see the next one's called You've Had Enough. Originally, it was when this character performs a critical attack, 100% chance that target gets minus 20 AP. And then lastly, she had Christmas Crew at the start of each turn while battling on the offense team. 80% chance to give all teammates camouflage for one turn. That is obviously what a lot of people used Carol for originally. Now, what it's been buffed to, you can see You've Had Enough has now been changed, where it's 100% chance that the target gets minus 40 AP, so a bit of a boost when it comes to the AP reduction. And then Christmas Crew has also been boosted to 100% chance all teammates get camouflage for one turn at the beginning of each turn. Now, obviously, this is going to be problematic if you take Carol in against Walker stages, but in raid attacks, war attacks, so on and so forth, it's a guaranteed camo to proc every single turn at the beginning of your own team's turn. And that means you've got a good like combat for things that can reflect, for instance, payback, so on and so forth. So just to show you how this works in a fight scenario, we are going to have a team that we're going to come up against that's got bleed on it and got reflect on it when it comes to Peacekeeper. If we do the signature move of Carol, we are going to be able to cleanse the bleed on three of my teammates, as you can see. And because I hit the crit, because of her own special skill, I cleansed it on Carol herself. This is obviously going to be a bit difficult against certain characters and teams because I have to hit a crit to cleanse it on her. But I also cleansed it on Negan. 
I also claimed it on Kenny and also Dale. Cal, unfortunately, has still got that bleed. So as long as you've got like one or two characters with you know, bleed resist, if, you're, if bleed comes back around as a meta thing, then you're going to be okay to cleanse it. Or if you have another character doing cleanses as well, it will obviously team up nice and easy. Now, when it comes to the reflect side of things, when you used to team up Carol and Kenny before, it would have an 80% chance of obviously proccing camouflage. You'd have to wait and see, depending on how many buffs you had on your team at the beginning of the turn. It would slow down the fights a little bit. Now it's 100% chance. So you know you can just do that signature move of someone like Kenny straight away. And if it does enough damage, which it did, we're going to see, obviously, no paybacks on other characters. Kenny himself, obviously, his own passes protect him from payback. But normally, other characters would get destroyed if they weren't Telltale characters. And as you saw, they're all absolutely fine. And this is because of the camouflage of Carol. So these are pretty nice upgrades for Carol in War Scenario. She's going to be pretty useful. If you still obviously use her, you're going to have a nice buff. But she has kind of been made like a, a bit more of a free-to-play play version of someone like um, Sophia. Obviously, Sophia's damage output is much, much higher. But... The utility when it comes to the camo for the entire team is going to work exactly the same. But it's going to work from the beginning of the fight. You know, you don't have to actually get the rush off to make it actually work. Now, if you did utilize this character purely as a character for roadmaps and stuff like that, like the more difficult walker stages, you are going to be in a bit of trouble because the 100% uh, camo now means that the walkers are just not going to actually come out of the dark, which is actually kind of hilarious. That's how I found out that the buffs actually happened in the first place. Because the upgrades on the passives, if we go to them, are grade 5 and limit break 3, you're going to have to basically buy the character fresh to be able to actually fix this scenario. However, Scopely could potentially do some sort of trade-in situation, but they haven't announced that these um, buffs have actually even taken place yet, so it's kind of surprising. Uh, I, I just saw them while I was streaming, and that's why I'm doing a video on them. But otherwise, I think these are quite nice buffs. And this was the most requested character from the community. So obviously, it was down to you guys that this character got picked. So hopefully, you're happy with the outcome. Now, the next character is a big favorite of mine. One of my most favorite characters in the Walking Dead series. And honestly, when he was in the Mythic era, I thought he looked so good. He looked so amazing. His art is great. Just his character visuals are great too. But unfortunately, while he had a little bit of potential when he was the first release, the limit breaks just did not give him anything extra that was actually any good. And he didn't ever really get used by anybody. He was also one of the hardest to acquire characters early on in the game. So by the time people even got their hands on him, he was already just not any character to be used. It was very unfortunate. So it's awesome that this character has actually been boosted. And we can look at his original Adrenaline Rush, which is kind of hilarious. It was called Target Elimination, 55 AP cost rush. This is at limit break three, of course. All of these are at limit break three. Deal 375% damage to one enemy. That enemy gets 80% heal reduction and 80% slow for four turns. Now, obviously, the limit breaks came in and boosted heal reduction and slow rather than damage. Didn't help very much at all. But if we look at the upgrade on the new buff version... It gets remove decapitation resistance for two turns. And this comes in before the damage, which has been boosted to 700%. So nearly double the damage. This is what those original limit breaks needed. And now the actual heal reduction and slow goes to 100%. That's more important for the heal reduction, just in case somehow he, they actually don't get killed by this because it's obviously massive. Because the decap resistance will obviously remove decap resistance. He is a decap himself. If it one shots a character, they're decapped. But if it doesn't, they can't get healed. It's actually kind of a nice combo. Now, the 100% slow, however, means they will actually combat certain characters like Outlast characters. Because what will happen is they'll get their AP, then they will get slowed. Meaning they can't rush. This is going to be a counter to characters like Vance and Eris in particular. Because Eris obviously hasn't really got any direct counters. But it looks like Beta's going to be the guy. Next, we have this signature move, and it was called Lay Them Low. It had an initial cooldown of turn two, cooldown of three turns, number of uses unlimited. Attack an enemy for 170% damage, remove all positive status effects from that enemy. Obviously, with the limit break upgrades, we needed that starting cooldown to actually be reduced to turn one, and it just never happened. The cooldown at three turns isn't nice, but the starting cooldown is the most important thing. When we see the upgrade on the signature move, 
You can see it did get that upgrade to a turn one signature move. It also gets a cooldown of two turns, so the usage of it can actually be a decent turnaround. And the damage of this signature move got massively boosted from 170% damage to 500% damage. This is off of turn one, a sig move, which is great. But not just that, the order of the operations of how things work got switched around, where he'll remove all positive status effects from the enemy before he does the damage. This is actually quite important. So for instance, if someone has a defense buff, he'll remove that first, then nuke them. So against characters like Wang Fa who start the fight with a defense buff or characters like Lao Po who start the fight with a defense buff, he'll cleanse that first, then he'll do 500% damage. Very nice indeed. Now last, but by no means least, we'll look at the passives. Now he does still only have two specific passives to himself. He has got cunning because of his support character, but he has like for like, whenever an enemy is healed, this character gets 20% defense for two turns, which obviously was kind of weird. He kind of was like this weird decap that was meant to be used on a defense team, but it never really, you know, panned out. Scout Collector, when attacking targets with less than 30% HP, he gets 40% attack. Now this was changed into something massively different, especially the first passive. Deadly Whisper, all Whisperers Allegiance teammates get 10% attack and 10% HP for each Whisper Allegiance teammate on the team. This character gets counter damage reduction taking minus 50% of the counter damage they would normally receive for three turns. In the last one, it's going to be Scout Collector again, but it's going to be boosted to 50% or less HP and plus 100% attack. So he basically becomes an execute character with that third passive. Now that Deadly Whisper passive will actually work for B to himself, even if he is the only character in a team. So he effectively will give himself 10% attack and 10% HP just for being in the team by himself. I did do the upgrades on this to max on my tests, but I believe you only have to upgrade this to 10 or maybe nine to be able to get the actual 10% attack and 10% HP. The second half of the upgrades is for the reduction in counter damage. And I don't think that is as important, but it's obviously up to you. I completely maxed it out just for tests. Now, before I just show a clip of how this is gonna work for Beta, I'm just gonna show you how his damage increase is gonna work if he has other Whisperer characters come into the team. Right now, he's the only Whisperer, but if we add Mike into the team, you'll see his attack stat and his HP stat will get boosted. As he gets an extra 10% damage and 10% HP, I believe this will act as separate multipliers, obviously, so the more you have, the more it's gonna get kind of crazy. If you have a complete team of Whisperers, if you have a complete team of Whisperers, potentially Beta's damage will go absolutely nuts. And just for fun, I thought I'd test it out. Yeah, pretty crazy. But in this fight, we're not going to be using any other Whisperer characters. We're just going to be using Beta, and you can see him on the battlefield. This is why Beta was just so cool, because he just looked so amazing. We're going to target someone who's got a 100% defense boost off the start. It is going to be Wang Fa here, and we're going to cleanse that, then do 500% damage. It is worth noting that this signature move can crit, so it can do massively amplified damage, but it also means it can hit reflect. So we've got to be very careful on who you attack, but the damage output is pretty nuts. And because obviously Beta is a decap, takedowns are down for good. If you team this character up with a character like Laura, like I showed in a previous video, the team up with Laura and any damage dealer is great. You can potentially nuke characters off of turn one like Eris, and obviously there as well going to be decapped, but because she just got slowed, you can see she did not get her adrenaline rush. And this is off of turn one. Now the first takedown is a bit RNG. You do need to hit a heavy crits against a lot of characters. There's no bonus HP on this team, which would obviously make it harder, but the rush is gonna be doing 700% damage against an Eris who obviously is fast, beat is strong. It obviously is gonna make sense if you do attack versus fast on there as well massively amplified damage on top. Now, if I just defend on Clementine, you'll see that Eris just actually just gets taken out. She does her Sinich move, but it just doesn't show the animation. This is actually something I was told recently because I thought she was bugged in this situation, but she just actually did her Sinich move, but you just don't see it actually happen. But now she's decapped, down for good on the fight. And that is Eris, one of the hardest to deal with characters being countered by the new refresh of Beta. 
So big changes for Beta, and I'm really happy that he's going to be able to get used primarily in attack teams. He may be only specific to certain teams or characters, but the fact that this guy has had a massive rise, massive, massive rise here in 2023 is great. It's also worth noting that Beta's base stats also got rebalance so his base stats go up to 32,000 attack this is going to make a big difference in his damage output adds to all the multipliers including within his own passive now hopefully we could get to see more characters get buffed in the future because this is really hype this is really hype for people and i've seen a lot of people talking about this boost and and raising this character that honestly i don't think too many people had teared up if you did have him teared up just because you love beta now you've got an absolute monster on your hands and should really work great even by himself but with laura like i showed the potential between those two characters is great off of turn one but let me know your thoughts on the buff to christmas carol and the og strong beta let me know in the comments down below guys that is going to be the end of my video i want to thank you so much for tuning in and as always keep on surviving guys keep on Surviving.